Hello, fall family weekend participants. I'm going to try and make this video a little bit shorter than the last one, the so-called welcome video. And um, here I want to actually go through the canvas. So the idea was to show you what an electronic canvas looks like for your students. They will have this in most of their classes and will be navigating it. Uh, to complete their their courses. So we had the idea of let's take one of my classes that actually happened to be online even before COVID and show you what it looks like. It's just even more enjoyable because it's cheese and you get to participate. So let's just say now in terms of terms, we have face-to-face -face classes, which are what students are most familiar with and faculty are most familiar with, the face-to-face. And then we have online as an alternative. And online classes uh, don't have synchronous course meetings usually. And the students complete the work online, much like the cheese courses. The cheese course was online to begin with. It's fancier. It's a little bit more complicated than just putting a face-to-face -face class online, which is what we call remote delivery. So now with COVID, we have um, what's called remote delivery. And, uh, and uh, in those canvases, students obviously are getting all of their course material. Um, and they're participating like we're doing right now in Zoom lectures. Those can be synchronous or asynchronous. Synchronous means that it happens at a specified time. Students have to show up Tuesday, Thursday, 10 to 12. I'm teaching a synchronous class now. Or it can be asynchronous, and my classes in the summer were asynchronous. So I recorded the lectures, I had the guest speakers, and some students were able to make uh, the synchronous presentation, but others just reviewed uh, the video recording at their convenience. That's the difference between synchronous and asynchronous. And almost all of our classes are in remote delivery mode. In order for a class to be online, um, it had to go through a rigorous review process. And the cheese class did go through a rigorous review process. So it's a particularly good example of remote delivery, <laughs> if you will. All right. So you'll uh, be experiencing this as the students experienced it. And uh, questions always asked, how can you make cheese? How can you have an experiential class online? And almost all my classes are experiential. And I've had to put all of them uh, in remote delivery mode. So I've, I've created eight of these canvases since March. And 10, if I include the public canvases like this cheese making, and I'm facing another two right now for winter quarter. So that's going to be 12. 12 classes I've put uh, into remote delivery or finessed a little bit if they were already online, like the cheese class. Um, so a few things, uh, some points I want to make, and then we'll just go through the canvas, which will be helpful for you who are uh, interested in making the cheese. First, I want to say that the workload for the faculty has doubled, if not tripled. So I know they're in, in, in the ether out there is like, you know, reduced tuition and all of that. And going along those lines, the tuition should be double or triple because that's how what's happened to our workload. It has doubled and it has tripled in some cases because there's been some kind of face-to-face -face component that people have actually had to put together two classes, one remote delivery and one face-to-face. -face. So it has been uh, phenomenally time consuming to, uh, to, to be conscientious <laughs> at least and put together a good course. So anyway, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to show you what, what one of these courses uh, looks like and then give you a chance to ask questions. So there's Padlets here in the Canvas for discussion. And then also uh, Saturday and Sunday, I'll be holding some live sessions too. So that's one point. Second point is that, um, is that we've been able to create serious student interaction, what I call serious student interaction, and give students lots of opportunities to participate 
especially via threaded discussions and in Zoom meetings, that some of which they themselves are calling. So the university has a Zoom Pro license in part so students can call their own Zoom meetings, like if they're working on group projects, it's very sophisticated uh, at any time. And our means of interaction is going to be through Padlet in this Canvas. Uh, but I could use that also for students. My third point is that the quality, the first one being that this is a lot of work, second being that there's a lot of good interaction, and the third is the quality is very high. So in my classes, I invite uh, guest lectures. I teach business and sustainability. Uh, in the management department. I didn't mention that, did I? In that last video that I just did, the welcome video. And we just had Ron Woodard. Ron Woodard is the ex-president of Boeing. Mm -hmm. He was president of de Havilland in Toronto and a Boeing commercial and uh, MagnaCore and uh, has lived to tell the tale. What a rich experience for students to be able to offer that. You'll see it yourselves in our guest speakers in the recordings for the cheese class especially Mother Noella, the cheese nun. How crazy is that? She's a luminary uh, in the food world and I'm able to bring that to our students. The fourth is that these courses are demanding. They're demanding of the students, uh, but the fifth is that they are rewarding too. So uh, let's go to, I'm going to share screen and then take you through the canvas to navigate the cheese course, but also just to see what remote delivery. Uh, and as I mentioned, this was online before, so it went through some rigorous checks, uh, what that looks like uh, for your students. So, all right, here we are. If you go to the homepage for the Canvas, uh-huh. You will see, uh, I believe, uh, yeah, a welcome message. You'll see the logo here uh, and then information on the cheese kits. So I hope you got your cheese kit. We're going to keep this open for a couple of weeks. So I'll be available to, to respond to, um, to your questions in Padlet um, in the course on cheese or on remote delivery for a couple of weeks uh, after uh, fall family weekend. So you can buy your cheese making kits there if you like. All you need to do is follow the recipe to the letter. So this cheese class is not about making cheese. It's about paying attention. I think that it should be a class required of all students, all 15 to 18,000 students. Why? Because it develops and highlights the importance of focus. I'm sure something that uh, you can support. Um, because if you're not focused, the temperature of the milk will rise and it will take hours for it to come down due to the thermal capacity of the milk. So there's so many life lessons in this cheese class. Buy the cheese kit and buy high quality milk. So if you can afford it, um, you, the first choice is a low temperature, well, a fresh milk if you, if you live in a state uh, that allows the sale of raw milk. You will be very pleased with the results. You'll get a much higher yield <clears throat> to the solids content um, and enzymatic action in the milk. If you don't uh, use uh, raw milk, fresh milk like that, then, uh, and their raw milk uh, is permitted through grade A dairies in the state of Washington. In fact, I'm recording this from Shaw Island and we have the first raw milk dairy in the state of Washington on this island at Our Lady of the Rock Monastery. And in fact, Mother Noella Marcellino has left the Abbey and is now the mother prioress uh, at this little monastery here, which was the first raw milk dairy. Uh, in the state in 1981. Um, but if you don't, then try and find, find a low temperature pasteurization, pasteurized, a low temperature pasteurized, vat pasteurized milk. So two things there, low temperature and vat pasteurized. 
the quality of the milk is so much higher. The solids content is so much higher in terms of uh, solids recovery in cheese. Where do you, what is that? Well, I don't know what it's called in your part of the world, but here it's called Twinbrook. Okay, and they, I know they're sold all the way through Seattle, but I know he refuses to expand, so I don't think it goes beyond Seattle. Twin Brook milk in glass bottles. It's because it's a, um, a low temperature pasteurization process. It's not, you know, 186 or 225 or 280, whatever, for 30 seconds. It's a 30 minute process at a lower temperature, temperature, which preserves more of the enzymes. And the proof of the pudding is in the tasting, don't believe me. But if you read the student discussions, it is heart breaking because uh, the students are saying, I wish I would have used that milk for the cheese. It's all learning process, it's all good. Uh, also, please don't cut the recipes in half. That's another life lesson. Uh, so the recipes you want to follow uh, really precisely. All right. And so, uh, yeah, so this explains Padlet. Hopefully you've seen it already, in which case this is uber boring. So uh, let me go to modules. And this is not exactly what you're going to see because this is the teacher version. But you've got, um, this is where we're putting this video as soon as it, uh, I'm finished. And uh, the welcome video is here. These are kind of the assignments. Normally they would be discussion threads and the students would, would post. Um, they would post in, uh, in discussions uh, their pictures and their questions, their comments, their celebrations. Let's just go to the premiere. So it's it's a brings you to Padlet, a Padlet um, discussion, and I've already posted, I believe, once, right? And here's a picture of my feta. And just to use this, you just double click, and you write something. Yeah. All right. There is. Oh, I've got so many things blocking me. Okay, let's go back here. Good. And so you'll see that. Um, that's for Paneer, and uh, we've got it for Ricotta and for Marscapone. These are videos I made. These are videos I made just of the cheese making. So they're not very good. They're with a handheld uh, draw Android. Uh, uh, cell phone and. Uh, and um, but anyway, I've got what the process is. I won't go through them. There are only a couple of minutes about pouring the milk, adding the rennet, cutting the curd. And some of these steps are going to be very familiar, very similar to what you're doing. So I do recommend looking at these before you start. And then I have scooping the ricotta. Some of you have uh, got the recipe for ricotta, right? Uh, so this is really the pattern for a hard cheese, my process. Then I've got these wonderful guest lectures for you. And for example, this is um, Mother Noella, the cheese nun. And this is, you just click on the, on the recording. And I believe we made this cheese. Oops. Well, let's go back here. And, um, and, uh, that's the password. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is good. Showing you exactly what you need to do. Yes. And um, nice. All right, this one is, uh, I think, a little long. And uh, I don't like to run videos in Zoom, but. Um, Anyway, you, uh, this is, uh, this was our recording artist and uh, you can, interestingly enough, here's your script over here. Yeah. This is the history of cheese, people. 
This is the history of cheese in an hour and 29 minutes. It is pretty cool. Okay, so, uh, so you can listen to these uh, guest lectures. And then, and then this is what the, this is what the, the students would, would see uh, here. I'd have information on connecting to the internet to really help them, to support them in this process. I have the syllabus, won't apply to you, but it's, it's the syllabus that your students would see. And then uh, the, the, if you look at the structure of these modules, you can peek, you won't be able to do them, but you can peek and see what it is that the students are exposed to. And the way I like to organize the material, here's module one overview. I say exactly what the students are going to do. Then I have recorded lectures and videos. I've got the readings. I have a writing assignment, which appears as a quiz to them, even though it's not really a quiz, it's just a nice way to, to ask the question and for them to give their answer. It makes sense to the students. And then I've got discussion threads. And so types of cheeses around the world and, um, and the students have responded. And, uh, and this is what I wanted to do for our canvas, but we couldn't really let you into this. So you can see what questions the students participated what discussions they participated in, but you've got Padlet, so that's where you'll post. Uh, and then there is a quiz, all right? So that's the way that uh, the module material, there's four modules in the cheese class, uh, how it's structured. And then each module has little video quizzes. Uh, the readings are here. Those are the same discussions I showed you, and then these are the two culminating activities and each module looks like that all right and I do encourage you to uh, to look at these and uh, and and see what it is that the students uh, experience as they make their way as they make their way through uh, through the course so this happens to be um, uh, on uh, microorganisms and affinage and you can see the various little videos on affinage and mold ripening. There she is, Mother Noella, but on the national scene, not on the little screen where we got her to give a special guest lecture. And um, yeah, from there in the class, after the introduction and after the affinage part and the ripening, the next topic is the regulatory process. We're particularly interested in that in terms of raw milk cheeses. Appellations, what does that mean? Uh, the business of cheese, all right? And I added this only for view mode. So you're not gonna take quizzes, but you can actually look at the material. I won't call that up now. But these are the topics, world milk supply, raw milk dairy, food safety, FISMA, Food Safety Modernization Act, which has been almost destructive of small scale operations. Talk about why that is. Raw milk versus pasteurized. And then the last is an experience. So um, the, the students take a virtual tour of creameries, but if you look at the videos, you'll see some tours of creameries embedded in, in, in the four not all the lectures, but two of the four guest lectures have them. But then uh, the students had a Jack cheese assignment. And I have to say that was my piece de resistance. That was so good. So the students had a kit like you have bought, but they had different cheeses. They had hard cheeses. And uh, this is the first time I've tried this in the cheese class online. It's with a Jack cheese. And they did it. Here, by the way, is that beautiful cheesecake recipe. Highly recommend it when you make your ricotta. Yep. I've got advice on making cheeses. You can read the advice. I recommend it about sprinkling this cultures. I don't think you'll have rennet. I think you have an acid coagulation in your cheeses. Um, and uh, and then the aging, this is all the discussion about how you can age your jack cheese when you only have a refrigerator. But the students posted, I don't know if I can show you. 
Um, ah, so the students have been removed uh, from here. Okay, so we don't have the actual assignments. All right, anyway. So, but can you see, can you get a, a sense of how you can mentor an experience in remote delivery during COVID times? Students are struggling uh, with a number of things, but not least of which is their mental health, frankly. And so this is a time though to keep up, to maintain uh, a high level of interaction. When I see that students are falling behind, I email them, concept. I email them, how are you doing? How can I support you? What are you gonna be able to do in this class? And try and customize the experience for them what they need to do to pass. Remember that in the summer, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but we still had um, uh, an exceptional pass option where it was very easy for students to take the class. Right here, you can see pass, no pass. Okay, my goodness. And then I have the students do a self-assessment. You don't have to do that. But I will say that if you go to, ah, if you go to, um, the cheese making, you'll see those three Padlets. What we need to do is add the Padlet for your self-assessment, for Padlet with your questions about remote delivery. And I will um, talk to folks about that, all right? Okay, so this is a whirlwind tour. I welcome you to just walk through it. And, um, you won't be able to receive announcements, but that is why we have the Padlet. I asked, I'd ask you to refer to the Padlets, these Padlets, and then the fourth one, which is on questions about remote delivery, all right, frequently. All right, I am going to stop sharing and uh, say, I know that was a whirlwind, but I know it's also deadly uh, to have these long videos. I look forward to meeting you in our live session uh, on Saturday, Sunday, if you're watching this on the Friday before, but if you're watching it a week from now, sorry, those sessions have already happened, although maybe they're gonna be recorded, I'm not sure, I could ask. And, um, uh, but at any rate, feel free to contact me via Padlet. All right, excited for cheese making with you.